And hello everyone and welcome to another installment of Remembering the Future where I talk about things that never were, the future that never was, unusual technology concepts of the past. In this installment I'm going to talk about an attempt at an early consumer videotape machine from the 1960s. Most people think that consumer home video has been around since the late 1970s when Sony Betamax machines and the competing VHS systems from other electronics firms were released. However, in the mid and late 1960s, the Japanese company Akai attempted to market a home video system that was um, an open reel system, meaning it was tapes on reels rather than in a cassette. And the machine was called the VT100, and this was a black and white portable recording system which used a quarter inch uh, tape, and this was introduced around 1969. And the machine could record video using normal audio tape, however, the quality was greatly improved when using a Kai special quarter inch videotape. Now, this was meant for the consumer market, and although this seemed like a, a new innovation, uh, open reel videotape systems had been around for many years prior to this, uh, but these were massive uh, studio machines or very large uh, portable machines that had to be transported in a special production van. And most of the time, television programs were recorded on motion picture film, and for you know, motion picture film, of course, easier to work with. The camera is more compact, uh, more rugged in uh, you know, field settings. And there was just a large knowledge base of working with film leading up to that time compared to videotape. And videotape, the machines being fragile and the tape being more difficult to work with on some of the earlier machines. Now, the machine was meant to be portable and it actually looked like an early uh, home video system from several years later uh, that would, would have used a cassette but of course this was open reel or reel to reel and it had a detachable monitor and it even came with a video camera and it also came with um, a special RF modulator and what this did was convert the output signal from the machine to a signal that could be received on a conventional home television now the tape was usually on 5 inch plastic reels and later uh, a 10 and a half inch reel with of course more tape on it you know, came along. Now later a uh, machine referred to as the VTS-150 was introduced. Now this could record in color. Uh, one downside however was that uh, this machine couldn't play the black and white recordings made on the earlier VT100s because the tape speeds uh, between the two machines were different. And as you can see from uh, these pictures, uh, it looked like something that would be relatively easy to use for you know people in their home. And although the camera looks uh, bulky compared to uh, the later portable cameras, uh, it's it's easy to see from these pictures that a portable system that consumers that could easily take out in the field and use with with relative ease. This seemed very promising at the time because it looked like something that consumers could use with minimal expertise compared to the uh, professional level equipment at the time of the, the studio and the truck transported you know, larger machines. However, in one major downside, and there weren't that many of these machines released as proof of this, there was a very high price for the period that most consumers wouldn't have been able to afford. And the fact that it was an open reel system ultimately made it difficult to use and operate because of the physical need to put the, reel in the reels in the machine and manually thread the tape through the heads, videotape heads are very fragile. It's a major reason why video cassettes became, you know, so successful because of the advantage of having 
a simple cassette that you could load into the machine. The machine itself, all internally, would do the threading of the tape through the heads, minimizing any risk of damage to the uh, inner workings of the machine, along with the heads, of course. Well, despite the limitations and ultimate lack of sales of these uh, Akai machines, it still demonstrates how promising this was, how forward-thinking the company was in an attempt to develop and market this system, because electronics were getting smaller, videotape was gradually making inroads into uh, video production beyond you know, the limited production uh, of the time, and this was still a major leap ahead in the miniaturization and portability compared to the large uh, studio and truck transportable machines that were in wide use at the time. And this um, still was a big step forward in the development of consumer home video. And ultimately, the technology did evolve so that by the late 1970s, relatively affordable uh, VCRs became available. There was the Betamax, and that ultimately uh, lost out to the VHS system by the, by the 1980s. But it's still an important part of the history of this technology to see how long ago a company was thinking of you know, attempting to market this. And like I said, you see in these, you see in the pictures, this looks like something, you know, somebody could easily use at home, but they were too expensive, and physically loading the tapes would have been a problem. And I can imagine at some point, just to, you know, somebody damaging a tape, just attempting to load or remove it from the machine, and. You know, if, the, if any of us who used videotape or even audio tape have had to deal with uh, cassette tape getting or a video cassette tape being, you know, eaten by a machine, I can only imagine uh, having to overthink loading these machines <laughs> up to prevent something like that from happening with the open reels. And videotape being more fragile than audio tape, the open reels in the home, it probably would have been very difficult you know, long term to protect the tapes while they were out in the open being used, it more than likely would have, would have required more delicate handling just to open up a case and take a, a reel of tape out and to put it back in the case and store it compared to video cassettes being more easily stored on a shelf. However, despite the limitations and ultimate very low sales, a step in the right direction to affordable and easy to use home videotape systems. And while it would have been very interesting to see if these had developed what kind of systems we would have ended up with, you know, in the 70s and 80s, uh, it's, it was still a very promising attempt. And despite the failure, it still led to what we ended up with in the 70s and 80s. We all know how long VHS tape uh, was around well after digital formats began to hit the market. Well, and that's it for now, and I hope you all have enjoyed this installment of Remembering the Future. Click subscribe and keep checking this channel out for future installments of Remembering the Future, where I'll tell more stories of things that might have been in the future that never was.